Doctors say you're in great shape. Well, they should know. It's a down point. Cigar? Oh, thanks. Paul, you're a pilot. A test pilot. One of the best. And you've been through a traumatic experience. Still, so that's all in the past. Consider the future. Your future. My future? What I thought was that you should take a rest. On oh, full pay, of course. Oh, of course. I suggest that we uh, talk again in, say, a couple of months. One question. Well? Where's the cine film from the reconnaissance camera? No, look, Paul. Where's that film? Uh, Paul. Got my report. You read it? You wrote that report three days after recovering from a six-day coma. Six days, six weeks. What's the difference? Look, what I wrote is true. That's the way it happened. Explosion. Strange lights. Unidentified flying object. Look, just process that film! Both the plane and the film are with a military investigation unit. All right, I want a hearing. They will tear that story of yours to shreds. You will never fly again for me. Or for anybody else. Do you understand that? You should have warned me. Well, I just considered that this was what any well-turned-out film executive would wear. Have to maintain our cover. I gotta start showing my face up top. Talking of cover, I've had General Henderson on the line. Now, uh, what does he want? Foster wants a hearing. Foster? A test pilot. And he's no pushover. He knows what he saw and he's sticking to it. Well, wasn't the co-pilot killed? Yeah. So whatever he says is not corroborated. Right. Well, I hope you find the surroundings to your liking. It's a new twist. To sit down. Comfort, privacy, complete security. What more could you ask for? The answer to a couple of questions. Try me. Where's the cine film from the XV-104? As I was about to say, fortunately, the camera in question wasn't damaged. Then did I or didn't I see an unidentified flying object? You're not sure. Don't play games. You know, I believe you saw something. Well, at least that's a start. Ah, coffee. Look, Jackson, let's stop fencing around. Now, that film shows close-ups of an object, right? Now, I'm an experienced test pilot. That thing was extraterrestrial, I'm telling you. Around the film, Sai.
There's the other aircraft. What have you done? What have you done? What are you trying to pull? You've erased it, fixed it. Why? Why should I do that? <laughs> I ought to knock that smile right back down. <laughs> yes, things are not always what they seem to be, Mr. Foster. <laughs> You saw that? More games. Did you see it stop? Stop? Look, I throw it up and it falls back into my hand. But for a split second, just at the top of the trajectory, it stops. Did you see it? <sighs> but it did stop. If you say so. No, Foster, it didn't. It's moving forward at 500 knots, like everything else in this plane. And yet again, this whole aircraft is moving with the rotation of the Earth. Confusing, <laughs> but fact. Apparent facts can be confusing in an aircraft at night at 250,000 feet. Now, tell me all about it. What did you see from that cockpit? An extraterrestrial spacecraft. A light source? Yes. A trick of light? No. A reflection from the instrument panel? No. Refracted from the glass of your visor and the windscreen? No! There are a hundred other explanations. Only one, and you know it. Well, I have a report to write. Um, if you... If you could give me a few facts. Uh, your name, Paul Foster, address, I have it. Uh, you've been a pilot for? Eight years. Eight years. And a test pilot for two. Right. Now, I can see here you reported a sighting three years ago. Yes. And another two and a half years before that. That's right. Then we shouldn't be meeting again for another couple of years. rooms this way. The janitor let me in. Good old janitor. Drink. Why did you murder my brother? Read the report, Alec? Couldn't put it down. Conclusions? I think we can be cautiously satisfied. Yes, I agree. Three UFOs, two knocked out by the moon base interceptors, and one destroyed in the atmosphere by Sky One. But there are still areas that need work. Interceptor launches, for example. Too slow. Yes. I want to see those astronauts spaceborne within two minutes of a red alert. Go to moon base, Alec. Drill them, flatter them, cajole them, whatever. But get those times down. 
Nice assignment. Where do I get my stick? No, Alec, that would be my way. I'm sending you because you're the right man for the job. Okay. Anything more on Foster? Yes. He's tough and persistent. What happens if he starts getting close? One man or the cover of a multi-billion dollar setup? What do you think? Then they told me you'd worked out a story to cover wrecking a very expensive aircraft and killing my brother. Well, you've heard both sides of the story. What do you believe? I don't know. You know, as long ago as 1968, the authorities issued a report officially denying the existence of UFOs. Why? I don't understand. Why deny it? Why bother? I'll give you a reason. Let's say the authorities had proof, indisputable proof that UFOs had come to Earth. What would be the result if it leaked out? Mass hysteria, terror, a breakdown of authority. So, they issue a report, an official denial, and try to discredit anyone who claims to have seen one. Five years ago, I saw one. Two years later, another. They exist, you've got to believe them. Up there with your brother, I saw something. I believe you. Thank you. Your brother had a camera. Did they find it? I don't know. There are some personal effects, but I'm not allowed to have them yet. Something to do with security. Who told you that? A man called Koufax. Koufax? Do me a favor, meet me tomorrow. But what are you going to do? Follow my nose. Don't worry. Everybody else thinks I'm a nut. I've got nothing to lose. Where are you going? See you tomorrow.
Fairfax, you've got a mind like a steel trap. broke into Koufax's office. It's a trick. There's nothing. No, but it proves that somebody was interested enough to doctor this film as well. Paul, might it be better to forget all this? No. I can't just drop it, don't you understand? I'll go and get those back issue papers you wanted. I feel great. Who did this? Well, it certainly wasn't the janitor. I'll get you a drink. Straker. Paul Foster. No, I don't think I want to speak to him now. Uh, 
Tell him to meet me in the studio. In an hour. Right. Find Alec Freeman for me, will you? Ask him to come here. Yes, sir. You wanted to see me? Yes. I'm seeing Paul Foster in an hour. How much does he know? That's what I aim to find out. You look after things down here. You plan to use that? Good afternoon. My name's Foster. Ah, yes, to see Mrs. Draker. Mr. Straker told me to tell you to meet him at Rupert Square. Rupert Square? Right there. You must be Foster. I'm Straker. Ed Straker. Hey, Louis. Where are you? I'll be right with you, sir. Is, um... That thing real? Excuse me. Fine, Louis. You can go ahead. Right. Thanks, Mr. Straker. We'll start building right away. Uh, just check with me in the morning about the final details. Right. Yeah, it's going to work out just fine. Oh, that's Louis, my construction manager. Great guy. Well, what's on your mind, Mr. Foster? Unidentified flying objects. Oh, good subject. You got a script? No. I really mean it. I saw one. Now, why don't you tell me all about it, then? Yes? Where's Commander Straker, Miss Elam? He's still with Foster, sir. Thanks. That really is a very good story, Mr. Foster. When I'm in the film business, I suggest you tell that story to the police, the Army, the Marines. Now, if you'll excuse me, I have a very heavy schedule. Quite a switch, Air Force Colonel, to film executive. You must have your wires crossed somewhere. Have I? Mr. Foster, let's step into my office. Some office. Oh, it's too big. Sparsely furnished. Very hard to eat. But we won't be disturbed. 
Oh, it's uh, soundproof, too. Look, ten years ago, you were a colonel in the Air Force, a degree in astrophysics, two years lunar research at MIT, a career officer. What happened? Well, let's say the car crash made me want to change my career. Why did it crash? He had a blowout. On a Rolls Royce of 50 miles an hour. They don't make the tires. Then why was the whole area cordoned off? Well, you've obviously read the report. A British cabinet minister was killed. Security. I don't buy it, Straker. Look, I'm not trying to sell you anything, boy. Look, sir. I've been through a lot these last few weeks. First, there was Koufax. I found a letter to you in his safe. Oh, that was innocent enough, but someone got at him. And then Jackson from the military investigation team. What happened to the film, Straker? The film that showed the proof. The film that cost my co-pilot his life. And then those two bright boys who came to my apartment and bust the place up. I suppose they were sent to frighten me off. Where's your evidence, Foster? Just show me one thing, just one. What you're saying is that Foster's right and everyone else is wrong. What I'm saying is that I'm right. Oh, you're wrong, Foster. You're so wrong. Look, I don't give up. I keep slinging the mud until some of it sticks. You have never laughed at this, Mr. Film Executive Straker. Things are not always what they seem, Mr. Foster. An acoustic gun. It's very clever. Place charges in the wall of a set, for example. Load the gun with blanks, and when you fire it, the sound detonates the charges. Very realistic. Well, you look surprised. I think we got a few more surprises for you. Let's go. So, you're a test pilot. That's right. Trained to expect the unexpected. I guess so. And brace yourself. Straker. Voice identification positive. Commander Straker. Underground headquarters of Shadow. Shadow?
Okay, Alec. Wheel them in. So what happens now? You were on a test flight over the North Atlantic, Foster. Due to a kind of dogged stupidity, you found yourself in the middle of a UFO incident. Well, this is Colonel Freeman. Dr. Fraser, you already know. Hello, Foster. How are the eyes? We induced a temporary blindness uh, just to keep you on ice for a few days. Now, your boss, Koufax, knows nothing of all this, but he played along. He has his military contract to think of. Operatives Doug Jackson and Sai Chen. Jackson's a psychiatrist as well as a trained interrogator. His report told me quite a lot about you. Yes, determined, good logical thought pattern, a little headstrong. Louis Graham, electronics man. And he happens to be a pretty good construction manager as well. So you had the whole thing wrapped up from the start. But why this setup? Why shadow? Why this secrecy? You summed it up pretty well yourself. I'll give you a reason. Let's say the authorities had proof, indisputable proof that UFOs had come to Earth. What would be the result if it leaked out? Mass hysteria, terror, a breakdown of authority. I said that in the apartment. So, they issue a report. Hello, Paul. Ah, the field leader of Project Foster. Operative Jana Wade. It's all been a test for you, Foster. You followed a predictable set of clues. You even showed a certain initiative. But basically, it was an inevitable chain that led you to the studio. Thank you. Now stay, Alec. You realize, of course, that we can never let you go free. You know too much. There is one way. Shadow needs men. I'm talking about leaders, commanders, men able to captain the world's most advanced submarines, take control of moon base, the right men. Are you one, Foster? After the stiffest medical you've ever experienced? After weeks of computer and psychoanalytic tests? After a training course that will tear your guts out, you might be halfway there. Well, I'd like to try. I thought you would. Read this. Foster. Paul J. 804. It's all yours, Alec. Straker. Yes, yes, I'll speak to him. Would you get me moon base, please? Oh, and by the way, where are those transit reports I asked for? Mm. Would you get this, please, and get it good and clear? Immediately means now. Right. Mm. 